Hello champions, my name is Mohammed Sami and today we are going to dwell upon the idea of data warehousing. The data warehousing as an idea was first put forward by William H. Inman. He visualized a collection of non-volatile, time-variant and integrated data to support decision-making process of the management. The keywords here being non-volatile, meaning the data does not change and is non-editable, time-variant meaning the chronological changes in data are preserved and integrated meaning the data is combined from various heterogeneous sources another gentleman mr ralph kimball proposed an extension or rather an evolution of this model he defined a data warehouse as a process and a system that extracts cleans conforms and delivers source data in a multi-dimensional form to aid the purpose of decision making. So to sum it up, Inman defined the properties of a data warehouse whereas Kimball defined its structure and architecture. Now before proceeding to discuss what each of these gentlemen are talking about, let us first try and understand a few basic, basic terms. The first of them being data. data. It is the fuel that runs an enterprise. It is consumed and produced at every step of a business process. For example, registering a user on a social networking site creates data. The activities of that user then continuously consume and produce data. Similarly, an enterprise creates and consumes enormous amounts of data. Now such huge amounts of data production poses a great challenge for storing and retrieval of data for business processes as well as for analytics. Such a scenario created the need for a database and a management system of that database. To put it together, a database management system. Now initial days saw data storage in text files that made life pretty unhappy for users and storage for users as the storage and retrieval of files or from files was a daunting task. Now this fueled the evolution of database management systems, mainframes on one axis and relational database management systems on another. Systems, you could say Oracle, SQL Server, DB2, MySQL and so on. To continue discussing about the relational database management system, let, let us meet the second term that we need to understand, the table. The basic philosophy of all relational database management systems was the storage of data in a two-dimensional structure with rows and columns. A row being a collection of related data elements that belong with each other functionally and a column being a collection of data elements that are technically similar but do not belong together functionally. Let us come to the definition of ER model now. Once the data storage problem was solved by arranging elements in a table, optimization started with the sole objective of reducing redundancy in data and increasing storage and retrieval performance, thus giving birth to the ER model. An ER model is a logical and functional connection between different tables that contain related data but were separated out for the sole purpose of optimization. That is, that they could have existed as a single table but that would have meant too much redundancy of data and thereby horrible performance. To know more about the ER model, entity relationship model and optimizations, read normalization normal forms and denormal denormalization concepts just google it let's move on to an example the example on the screen shows an order table that stores order number customer number and item number where the customer and item item identification details are stored separately in their own tables thus for example if a single customer orders multiple items the customer and item details need not be duplicated in the order table, thereby increasing the speed of storage and retrieval by keeping the order table small and manageable. 
big data very popular term these days now big data is just a term for collection of data sets so large and complex that it becomes difficult to process using on-hand database management systems or tools like we just discussed a traditional database management system envisages the uh, storage of data in columns and rows but if you're talking about varied sources of data for example audio files video files uh, you know la very huge text files and with your social social networking data with your twitter uh, tweets from your twitter uh, messages or likes from your facebook stuff like that and it becomes very difficult for a traditional database management system to handle now big data like i said comes in various formats and it accumulates at tremendous speeds and and continuously keeps growing and the growth is not just multiple it's exponential now big data is again like i said characterized by three Bs, the volume, the velocity at which it is produced, and the variety of data. Now, having discussed that, we don't need to dwell too much upon big data at this stage, so we're just going to skip ahead. Data warehousing. Ah, now that was our topic, wasn't it? It is the craft of organizing and storing data in a way so as to make its retrieval efficient and insightful. Interesting, isn't it? To put it in another way, it can be called the process of transforming data into information. Data warehousing is like a relational database that is designed for analytical needs rather than for transactional needs. We'll read about that and we'll understand that in a while. It usually contains historical data that is derived from transactional processing systems. Keep this point in mind. Basically, a data warehouse contains dimensions which define the when who, where, why of business data. That is, they answer these questions. And the facts define the questions or answer the questions, how much, how many, and so on of business data. So to put it all together, you can call data warehouse a collection of dimensions and facts. The star schema. We learned in the data warehousing slide earlier that a data warehouse is typically a collection of facts and dimensions. But these facts and dimensions should be put together or connected with each other with meaningful relationships. Only then will you be able to provide insightful reporting from a data warehouse. Now that is when a star schema emerges. The figures above show a conceptual star and a logical star. Conceptually, a star schema is a fact table which is centrally located around multiple dimension tables. Now, don't get me wrong, this is not, uh, it doesn't mean that you can have only five dimensions. You can have many, many dimensions as long as your system allows it. A logical star is nothing but what, ha what happens underneath that star schema. Basically, you have a single fact table surrounded by multiple dimension tables which are connected with primary key foreign key relationships. OLDP and OLP systems. Now that we have understood what a data warehouse is and what a star schema is, let's just go on and see what these two strange looking terms mean. An online transaction processing system, that is an OLTP system, gathers inputs processes information and updates existing information to reflect the changes and run your business processes. Now, what does that mean? Let's take an example, a sales processing system. A sales processing system accepts orders from the customers, enters this, that order into the system, looks for inventory of the particular order and bills the customer for it. Now this is a business activity. You're making a sale to a customer. That's a business activity. Now let's go on to online analytical processing system. An online analytical processing system, on the other hand, involves extraction of data from OLTP systems, transforming it to suit demand and making it available for business analytics. Now what is an example? A business intelligence or a reporting system. Typically, to understand, an OLTP system is what runs your business. And, uh, and and an OLAP system or, or an online analytical processing system is what 
shows you how your business is running. To visualize it, imagine an operational user who does your business operations on your OLDP system. Uh, the operations include multiple business processes and this, these processes and operations together generate a data. That data is in turn stored in an OLTP database in the entity relationship form that we studied earlier. Whereas in an OLAP system, what happens is that the OLTP data that was, that was stored from the operations that was generated by business processes and operations and stored in the OLTP data is a uh, OLTP database is extracted, cleansed, conformed to a certain standards and stored in a dimensional manner. Now, what is a dimensional manner? We'll look at it in a while. That data is then utilized by the management user for analysis. This analysis in turn leads to certain insightful understandings about the business processes, whether they are performing well, whether they are not, whether they are performing as expected or beyond expectation. How did they perform last year in comparison uh, to current year? How, or rather how did they perform this year in comparison to the previous years and stuff like that now this kind of insight allows you to create or allows you to make some business decisions and which in turn change your operations the operations in turn again create business processes the business processes create data and and so on the cycle goes on Now, before we go, let's just discuss about the cube. What is a cube? A cube is a manifestation of the star schema. In the data warehousing terminology, in the data warehousing world, in the data warehousing jargon, a cube is always a manifestation of a star schema. Now, some uh, tools or some technologies or some vendors might call their star schema a snowflake schema. Some of them might call their star schema an extended star schema, but ultimately, all these schemas are offshoots or you know uh, are inherited from the basic star schema now what is the basic star schema you have a central fact table surrounded by dimension tables now that's how a cube looks looks like central facts surrounded by dimensions just keep this in mind so that it's helpful for you to visualize when we actually start discussing a tool or a vendor specific uh, technology such as SAP BW or SAP BODS or even BO. Thank you very much for li listening to me, to my nonsense. And if you have any queries or if you want to contact me for uh, the purpose of, uh, purposes of training and uh, training in SAP BW, SAP uh, BO, SAP BODS, that is Business Objects Data Services, which is SAP's own ETL tool, uh, now own, in fact, acquired earlier. You can contact me on samihassan.md at gmail.com. Thank you very much. See you again.